It's so exciting to see so many players, YouTubers, and gamers from around the world in awe over how well Toys for Bob and Activision Blizzard have been handling the Spyro Reignited trilogy. That was until a recent discovery was made. If you look on SpyroTheDragon.com, scroll down to the cover art, and look at the tiny fine print on the bottom of the, of the cover, it says, requires content download under original three games remastered. And if we look to the right, under the pre-order button, we say games two and three require download via the internet. This tiny little mishap has a lot of people outraged and spewing hatred from around the globe on YouTube and other platforms. And I can understand the backlash. You buy a trilogy of games, it says on the box you got a trilogy of games in this box, and it's only got a third of the game there. You gotta download the other two thirds from the internet. I get it. But a lot of people are complaining about that without really maybe taking into consideration the variables that may have led to this decision. Um, but because let's look at the Crash Insane trilogy. All three games were on that disc, and the only thing that was required for download were the subsequent patches that were released post-launch, and the two levels that were released as DLC in the form of Stormy Ascent and Future Tense. But, if we look at the recent variants of the Insane Trilogy's box art, we see that the two bonus levels are advertised and are on the disc itself. No internet download required. Let's go back to the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. It's very possible that Toys for Bob may not have been able to meet the deadline that they had set forth for redeveloping these games from the ground up for PS4 and Xbox hardware, and instead of delaying the game, you know, unnecessarily and having to delay products or possibly harm any currently manufactured discs, they said, you know what, let's just send out the first game since that one's full, you know, complete, and we'll just treat the other two as a digital download that the disc acts as a key to trigger the download. You know, it's possible that the that Toys for Bob wasn't going to be able to meet the September 21st deadline when you consider the fact that the games had to be pressed by the tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands, per territory, and then shipped, and then gotten received by their retail partners in both in-store and online. There's a lot of factors that could have led us to why Activision has made this decision, you know. Some people are even speculating that Activision went with a single 25 gigabyte layer disc instead of the dual layer 50 gigabyte discs. That's possible too, but considering they didn't do this with the Insane Trilogy, part of me wants to believe that this has to do with this trilogy taking much longer to develop than initially anticipated. Um, the Insane Trilogy may have set sort of a benchmark or a rough estimate as to how long it would have taken to develop the Spyro games, but when we look at Crash and Spyro, they're two very different, you know, games by design even though they share the same genre. When you look at Crash 1, Crash 2, and Crash 3's levels all together and individually, you'll notice that a lot of materials get recycled and reused. The jungle levels all look similar, the native levels all look similar, the ruins levels and the sewer levels all look similar, similar textures, similar models, similar flora and fauna. They all get reused periodically in each respective game and throughout the trilogy all together. When we look at Spyro, the same cannot be said. You know, from part 1 to part 2 to part 3, all of those games and all of their individual levels are drastically different than the one than by comparison to the crash levels. And because of this, you know, it could have been an oversight by someone at Activision or Toys or Bob and they realized possibly too late, oh shit, we can't get all these games pressed on the disc, so why don't we at least for the launch window have part two and three act as digital download codes even though you own the disc and they don't tie it to anything. I could understand this outrage more so if these if Activision said, you know what, you're going to buy the trilogy, but part two and three are going to be tied to a DLC code that only works the first time around, basically screwing over the second-hand market. But that doesn't seem to be the case here. That It just seems that a deadline could not have been met, and in order to avoid unnecessary product delays, Activision decided, you know what, we're going to send the first game's code off with the uh, line of code that triggers a download for the other two games and roll with that for now. And it's very possible, and I honestly believe that this is the route they're going to take, is that shortly after launch window and all those initial uh, shipments sell out, Activision will go back to Sony and say, hey, you know, here's all three games in this coding, stamp it on a, on a dual layer disc and ship it out as that. And they'll probably remove the internet download content, whatever label required from the game packaging. 
it's very possible. Now, does this excuse it? Does it suddenly make everything right? No, but it potentially at least explains as to why they would do this because I don't see why Activision would want to deliberately shoot themselves in the foot when the best thing that Spyro has had going for him, at least in terms of an intellectual property, in the last 20 years is the remaster of these three titles. You know, if they screw this up, they can't go back and re-remaster these titles. This is, these remasters are gonna lay the groundwork for these franchises for the next generation and beyond for console players and maybe PC players. So, I would at least like to think there was a logical, you know, decision, some reasoning behind this decision other than, oh, Let's just screw over the customers. It just doesn't make sense why they would want to shoot themselves in the foot when they're spending millions of dollars in development, or well, tens of millions of dollars in development and marketing for these games. So we'll just have to wait and see how this all plays out. You know, if you've canceled your pre-order, I can't necessarily blame you, but I still have my pre-order down. I still look forward to reviewing and playing these games, and I'm still fucking excited to be flying around in Spyro 2's Autumn Plains doing absolutely nothing but just gliding throughout the fucking territories, okay? So, with all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed your time spent with me today. I look forward to seeing your comments down there in the comment section, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Special thanks to my four patrons, At Reef, Patrick, Joker, and Harley. To join these wonderful people in the end credits, click on the Patreon link down there in the description section.